Hello. Hi. It's time for respiration. <laughs> Not that type of respiration. We're talking about cellular respiration. Oh. So open up a new notebook page and you need to title it What's Respiration? Put the date on top and get ready. Buckle your seatbelts and enjoy the ride. Don't forget too, if we're going too fast, make sure you pause it, take down some notes, and then push play again. Don't let it play all the way through if you're not getting down what you need to. This is a tricky topic, and it's its own power standard. So like, take your time to memorize this and then learn it now. That way you don't have to do the insufferable reinforcement worksheet later. Mm -hmm. So you just finished photosynthesis, which was huge. Photosynthesis. But... Photosynthesis but. is something that only occurs in plants, okay? Mm -hmm. Respiration, on the other hand, is very important because it occurs in both plants and animals. So you are undergoing respiration right now. Okay, so what is respiration? First, let's kind of backtrack a little bit and go with something you probably haven't learned in a couple of years, that your body, in order to get energy, first your food has to go through your digestive tract. Mm -hmm. So it goes down your esophagus into your stomach and it works its way into intestines. Yep. Then, bada bang. So similar to how we talked about how plant cells break down things, your body breaks down the food that it ingests as well because the way in which we put it in our body isn't useful. So we have to break it down and basically pull out the things that our body wants to keep, so vitamins and minerals and the things that don't really do anything for us and then get rid of them. <laughs> and that's how you get rid of them. <laughs> funny. Um, your breaking down process actually starts with your, like, your mouth. So you chew your food, but then also that saliva um, has enzymes which start breaking down that food. So it starts from the very second you put food in your mouth, which is why you salivate when you start thinking of pizza, nice gooey pizza. Mm, you, that, that the idea good. of food makes your salivatory glands start production of spit, which is saliva. Okay, so when it's broken down small enough, then it's gonna go into your cells. So remember, it's gonna pass through your cell membrane, okay? And different cells may need different things. So your body's gonna kinda of direct those um, vitamins and minerals to wherever they're needed. So once they get into your cell, then we release energy. See this guy down here? He has lots of energy. He's like, hello, I got energy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're so so cool. your cells then take that that um, the the vitamins and the minerals and then they turn them in so that they can let go of the energy so your body actually has energy. So when people say that food is energy, that's partially true, but it has to go through this whole process in order to actually be energy your body can use. And this whole energy thing is where we need to talk about respiration because it's not just a snap and it's done. It takes a little bit of work. So let's talk about that in a second. We need to get some more background in here. So both animals and plants undergo respiration. So we will sometimes say they're kind of like photosynthesis and respiration are kind of like opposites because they are in some regards, but not with this. Both plants and animals do it, and sometimes kids forget that, that the, our plant friends need to, they can make their food, but then it's just food. Yep. It's stored energy, essentially. That's what calories are. So our cute little flower, cute little platypus, and everything in between. We'll go through respiration. Okay, so here's your official definition. And I would take this down in your notes. Okay. Right. So the first part, let's kind of talk about that. Um, so the process by which cells obtain energy from glucose or sugar so that is the actual food that you're putting into your body so when you eat that pizza or when you eat that fruit the glucose and sugar is pulled from that okay and then the respiration the cells will break those down into simpler things and that's and then they're able to release the energy mm -hmm. okay so there's several um parts here so we got a cute little bunny foo foo in honor of Easter. A little bunny foo foo's hopping through the forest. I don't know the Scooping rest. Scooping up some field mice and, and bopping bop, that's all it. the head. <laughs> okay, so um, one of your assignments will be just like the flower one. We had to label the parts, and now you have to label the bunny. Please forgive me. Most of this happens through his nostrils and his mouth. So I did create some orifices unnecessarily on his backside. So I apologize for that. So I do need a pen here. 
Actually, I'll just type. So one thing that goes into his mouth from the atmosphere is the oxygen. Mm -hmm. And um, you're like, but Millis, plants go through respiration too. Therefore, plants need oxygen also. Yep. They don't need as much oxygen as they do need carbon dioxide, but they you will use oxygen to obtain energy. And most of plants go through respiration at night. And then the other thing that they need is H2O. I mean, food. <laughs> <laughs> So they need food, <laughs> which we want to focus on glucose here. Which is sugar. Sugar, sugar. Sugar, which is stored in your food. Sugar, da 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 da, da, da. Honey, honey. Okay, what they release, um, they'll go through respiration and magic process, which we'll go to in a second, and they'll release carbon dioxide, including plants. They will also release this during when they're done with respiration. Which is CO2. So if you see a large C, a large O, and a 2 next to it, same thing as carbon dioxide. Yep. And it does not leave their backside. It will leave the nostrils of, a, of an animal. And they'll also release water. And you're like, I don't remember releasing water. Is this my urine? No, it is actually, it, it could be some urine. But also, if you go like this, it feels moist. You're releasing some water in your breath. And finally, this last one is colored brown to match the bunny, because the bunny is storing his energy now. The bunny has energy to go scoop up the field mice and bop them on the head, or to hop and do whatever the bunnies do. So your oxygen and your food are the um, reactants. reactants, and then your carbon dioxide, water, and energy are the products. Amen, sister. Preach it. Okay, so we do have a fancy pants equation. Which this is where you'll start to see how we mentioned CO2 on the last slide. This is where you're going to start to see these fancy equations. Wish I had my airline now. So the first thing that you're going to see here is we are going to go with carbon dioxide. Um, and you have six of those. Okay. And then what Ms. Millis is putting in there now <laughs> is uh, food or sugar. Okay, the, the formula for sugar is a little bit more in depth. And then we have our products um, that go on the other side of the arrow. So we had our two reactants go in and then they were turned into six molecules of water. Okay, um, six molecules ah, of... Ah, poop! We made a mistake. We did? Why didn't you catch my mistake? Oh, ta-da. And I'm too lazy to redo this video, so you guys need to catch that mistake and fix it in your notes. Sorry about that. And then energy. I'm not using an airliner, so I'm doing it with my mouse, so I apologize for that. So six oxygen and the food, that's your reactants. So you got to remember that term, reactants. And then your products are... Um, your water and your carbon dioxide and your energy. Energy is a product this time. It is not, remember with photosynthesis we wrote it above the arrow because it was like the thing that initiated the process? Well you don't need energy to initiate respiration. You use respiration because you actually need energy. Mm -hmm. So like I said, plants often go through respiration at night when they're, no, they're not burdened with the process of photosynthesis, which they can only do in the daytime because they have to have that light. So energy is actually a product. That is why it's written on the product side, because it is indeed a product. Okay. Anything else you want to add? Um, so when Ms. Mills talked about how plants go through respiration primarily at night, when do you think it would make sense logically for um, humans to go through respiration the most? You expecting them to answer? No. Oh when, no! When you think it's like the day? <laughs> yeah, when we need energy. <laughs> yeah, because at night we sleep, so we're wanting really, the students to answer. <laughs> so we don't really use energy as much energy while we're sleeping. So our body goes through respiration a lot more during the daytime when we're active. Right. Okay, so here's the um, two stages of respiration. This is where you start to get into the advanced concepts, where you the um, focus on the stages. So we have. Oh, sorry, where are you looking for me? Food, your glucose, your sugar, those are all the same, one and the same. So any of those words would work here. Okay? They get broken down into, I don't know what you're writing. 
smaller molecules. Okay. Um, in high school, you will have to be forced to memorize all these smaller molecules. In middle school, we just want you to recognize that there is a couple steps here. And that it's not just magic, wave the magic wand, you get energy, but food gets broken into smaller molecules. And you'll be tortured with that information later in life. Mm -hmm. And then you get a teeny, tiny amount of energy is released. This isn't your energy that you really need, but you do get a little energy here. So, tiny amount of energy. And that's in stage one, in the cytoplasm. It needs to be broken down because this guy then goes for stage two. The smaller molecules plus your oxygen head to the mitochondria. And then, through a series of events, that's where respiration happens. So it has to be smaller in, in order to enter into the mitochondria. The glucose molecule is too big for the mitochondria. So once these two have a rendezvous in mitochondria, they do their thing and they produce water. They produce CO2. CO2. And, and then they produce the big energy. And this is the energy you do use to um, run that mile, lift your pencil, impress the ladies. Yup. All that and above. Yeah. These two are diffused out of the cell. Well, I guess water would be osmosis. And these are, these are released out of your cell, and you will exhale them, and the energy is what you use. Mm -hmm. You could store them, you could use them. So here is another graphic from the old school textbook for you to see glucose, smaller molecules, tiny bit of energy in the cytoplasm, and all that jazz, that smaller molecule with O2, produces the same thing we just talked about. And if you think it would be helpful to make some diagrams of these pictures in your notebook, please feel free. Yeah, it's there to serve you, because we care. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts, Grammy? Uh, no, we will be uh, landing in our destination in approximately five minutes, <laughs> so please fasten your seatbelts and return your seats to the upright position. See ya. Later. You're weird.